Right, I'm just going to finish off, where are we now, by showing you the kind of scale that we can do. So this is a project that um, we ran a wee while ago, and I'm just going to try and So this is probably the most ambitious Petri net that we've ever built. So this was drawn by uh, a postdoctoral scientist, Alessandro Lovini, and this was funded by the NC3Rs, the funding agency that, um, that are for reduction of animals in experiments. So in systems biology, what we'd like to be able to do is test out our theories before we actually start going to make transgenic mouse or going to the lab at all, because obviously all of that is very time consuming and expensive. And so what this diagram actually is meant to represent is a virus infecting a macrophage. So I shall show and try and show you a little bit of how this is meant to show. Okay, so I'll probably use the magnifying glass in this case. So that is our virus. Okay, virus has eight, the influenza virus has eight genes and it binds to the receptor on the surface here. Let me just go in here a bit more. The, say that, say, say yeah, I guess it, I can't. I've <laughs> uh, been talking too long. Uh, receptor, that, that is the product of that binding, the receptor there. And what happens then is the virus through macropinocytosis and clathrin-mediated endocytosis ends up in the endos uh, endosome. Um, what is this? lysosome, I think it is. So once it's in there, then, and I say I don't want to click on this, this is often thing here. Once we're in there, then essentially the, the virus breaks up into the various genes. The genes go forward into the nucleus. And in the nucleus, we have two processes that begin, one of which is the transcription of those genes to produce the viral proteins. Those viral proteins then actually activate the copying of its own DNA. And during this process here, we end up at this side, with the virus particles being in the, spat out. Now, what we've actually tried to draw within this diagram is a lot of the biological defense systems. So macrophages are very well adapted. So actually a macrophage can, if you, if you compare the infection of an, uh, an epithelial cell with influenza versus a macrophage, the macrophages are a lot more better at, at actually preventing that infection than an epithelial cell. So where you might get 10,000 uh, viral particles particles produced by uh, infection of an epithelial cell, you only mainly get 100 when you infect macrophage. And partly that is because there are a lot of defense systems. So in this diagram, we also have here various defense systems built in here. So this uh, diagram, it's a very impressive piece of work. Alexander, again, had never done anything like this before. She built this diagram in about three months. Okay. This was from existing literature. There was a couple of diagrams available, one of which is in Reactome, another one that was published. And she basically accumulated all of that information together. She took various chunks of these macrophage pathways from our macrophage diagram and, and basically also read a lot of the literature and understood uh, the rate in which these things accumulated and then trying to make the model match those accumulations. So when we take this diagram, so this is a big chunk of biology, I think you'll agree. We can add it in there in a way. It says this looks like a signaling pathway. Yes. And well, let's see, time blocks 100. OK, let's try that. Bigger diagram, it'll take time longer to run, but you can see it's very fast. And you know the reality is that when we're actually building this diagram, you don't build a diagram like this in one go. You have to start building it, you put it into bio layout, you run it, go, oh God, I've made a mistake. You come back again, you edit your wired diagram, you go back again. So it's a very interactive and very fast process by which you can work between the two programs to build your diagram and to test out its functionality in this way. So in this, and to say you can look at it yourselves, we can go back and turn on those wired style compa compartments. Okay. So these are still flat. We could make them more voluminous and show a cell-like structure. Um, but I'm just going to now, for this benefit, turn these off. And let's see what happens when we run it. So again, I'm going to drop this down. So actually, the input of this pathway is only about 10 virus particles. But during that 
input, then obviously one of the things that we had to try and model was this idea that you only put 10 virus particles in, but you can get 10,000 out. So there are various amplification steps where the input is amplified uh, along the way. So, oh, let me <laughs> okay, I need to adjust a few things. So I need to take the node size down. I'm going to slow down the number of time blocks per second to perhaps four. And then we're going to watch what happens when a virus here comes through the system. And this is, as a say, viral gene transcription. This is genomic uh, copying. And we come out at the end. So let me make the nodes a bit bigger. Just takes a bit of tinkering this time. So that's the starting condition. There you can see the virus coming in. This is now lighting up here. And we can begin to see the series of events. And essentially, this is where our output is down here. And it takes a while for the virus to come out and to accumulate at the end. Now, why this is quite cool is because you can suddenly take these diagrams and you can say, what happens if this protein isn't present? What happens if I knock out this? What? It's a playground of assumptions. And it's assumptions that you can make in silico that may actually allow you to then go, actually, this is the experiment that I want to do. Or that, you know, we have in, in the work that describes this diagram taken out various proteins, known susceptibility loci for uh, influenza, and actually reproduce the fact that actually if you knock that protein out, you're going to get more infection. We can take interferon. So interferon is one of the main antiviral cytokines. We can say, what happens if we charge this cell up, first of all, with interferon? So around here, if I can find it. So find um, IFM beta. There it is down here. So that little pathway that we drew earlier is incorporated into this diagram. And we can say, so when interferon activates this, we activate a number of downstream genes. And a lot of these genes, and this is only a small representation of the number of genes which are activated, Actually, many of those genes are our antiviral proteins that will protect a cell from further infection. So if we prime a cell with interferon, we can then run this simulation again and find that actually by priming a cell with interferon before we infect with the, the virus, then essentially what we can do is protect the cell against infection. We get less viral particles out at the end. So that's kind of probably where I want to end today. I hope that's been a... <laughs> a slightly bit of probably something you've not experienced before in terms of thinking about biology and how we can model biology, how we can take those models and convert them into a, a system that actually allows us to run simulations and begin to imagine how this might, system might work in reality. And in so doing, you explore a space which is, allows you to go beyond just reading about things, but testing hypotheses, begin to test things and play around with things. Obviously, as far as bio layout's concerned, it doesn't matter what diagram you draw. It'll just take those nodes and edges and interpret them. I would encourage you, if you have interest, to start playing around with this flow simulation. You can get some quite lovely effects. It's you know working out how to draw diagrams. Just randomly draw them out, see how they work. If you have the inclination, if I've inspired you a bit there, then you can certainly now have the tools to begin to build your own Petri nets and diagrams of biological systems and play around with it. If nothing else, I hope you've enjoyed WIED. It's a nice tool. You might have a dissertation to write at some point. You might want to draw a diagram. And if you do nothing else, it's quite a nice diagram tool. <laughs> so um, a bit of fun. And uh, you know, as I say, hopefully, being able to do this might at some point in, in the future become uh, a nice way. So we're just writing up this work now, uh, which we hope to submit within the next few weeks. Um, and, you know, it is quite an advance. It's quite different from what anyone else is doing in the world in terms of how they think about this and the tools that I've given you to do this are quite unique, uh, I suppose, to us to this stage. But you can see how they could be quite useful. I hope I've inspired you to think they might be useful. Uh, in one context or another. Okay, I'm going to end there. Thank you.